So hi everyone. Today I have with me Dr. Shilpa. He's uh, she's one of the foreign trained dentists who was originally trained from India but had a journey where she went to different countries but recently she got accepted to three schools Boston University she's been accepted to uh University of Pennsylvania UPenn and the third school was doctor uh UIC UIC yep and you got an invite from University of Buffalo as well recently and let's see if she's going to be going for that uh bench exam and interview or not so in today's interview i'm going to talk to dr shilpa ask her about ask her about her journey how she was able to make it happen and uh, let's talk to her so thank you for giving us your time dr shilpa absolutely good to see you again doc how are you doing i'm doing great and i i would tell people it was an opportunity it was a fortunate opportunity that i got to work with shilpa during her interview preps and that's when we got to know each other and it's been splendid to work with somebody who had a journey like her so it's uh, i would say it was fortunate for me as well so doctor amongst three schools that i mentioned you got into uic you got into boston and now uh, upenn as well which school are you picking amongst these three uh, and i'm like hands down going to upenn because that's my dream school so i have been waiting for the invite so yes so if i if okay imagine if somebody is watching right now in pakistan india middle east or who recently came to us uh, they want to ask you why it was you pen your dream school why isn't boston your dream school or uic what's the comparison for you uh, i would say it's also because i had one of my closest friends who studied there and i have seen her going through the school her journey and i somehow had in my mind that i have to go to pen dental medicine so that is one of the reasons and then another one is it's being the ivy league i really like the program i got a chance to visit the school so i like the culture there how how was the school when you visit how was the school when you visited it like uh, overall you been did you, and did you you have done preceptorship at boston too right so you've been at boston yes. you've been at you pen so let's compare both of them how yes. how how was things for you how would you contrast the difference between both of them yeah uh boston was a very good school too like i got a chance to almost shadow there and interact with students and also faculty for a month uh that was a very good enriching experience because i got a whole view of how the academia runs how the schools run how the patient flow happens so it was a very good experience but when i was in upenn it was just like a one day tour i just mm-hmm. got to go with my friend and i got to meet my professor with whom i did research so i like there too because i first went there and i really thought like oh, i'm going to come to this school okay. so but yeah. sorry to cut you i'm i'm thinking i should have <laughs> asked you earlier but can you tell us about your profile because everybody must be thinking what your profile is like yeah so uh I would say my profile is not too much it's just basic like I have seen in facebook groups and in lots of things uh, so, like hey what's your profile what what all things you need how to get into school so i always had a big like a stigma kind of thing like you need to have a awesome profile you have to do so research what's your profile what's what year did you graduate and what so was it I- Yes. Okay. So I graduated in 2011 and my GPA was 3.68 and after I graduated I worked in year and then I got married and like any other girl I moved I had to move along with my husband so I had been in different countries like Japan, Singapore. I even tried to settle down in Australia before coming to US. So it was a journey where I got some breaks but I still made sure I persevered that I stay in touch with dentistry so I used to go back to India and work in between so it was like a mix of thing but once I came to US I made sure I pursue my career very organically so so, so what year did you move to United States so I moved in 2018 end of 2018 like and okay four. and after yeah. you moved did you started doing dental assisting do you became a hygienist what did you do after moving yeah. what's your profile up there yes so after coming to the us i started from 
uh, I actually took a break initially to, to just understand the process, like what is this? So yes, I definitely took a break. And from 2019, I started shadowing in offices, in dental offices. I got to know what exactly American dentistry is. And then because I didn't have a work permit, I had to just simply voluntarily shadow and voluntarily assist. So it took a while. And then I started working as an assistant for uh, almost nine to 10 months. I did the assisting and then I applied in my first cycle, but I literally got 16 rejections because I didn't hear back from anyone. So then I felt like this isn't enough. I have to be like more into building I mean I should have more experience maybe I'm not ready yet mm -hmm. that's when I started applying to preceptorship and I got in in Boston preceptorship so it was in Feb 2023 and finally I was doing a research with one of the professors in UPenn where because of COVID I couldn't go in person but I used to help her in publishing papers and paper writing and poster presentations so I added that to my profile and then finally, I made up my mind to give hygiene licensing exams. So like, you might be aware like Florida is the only state where you can practice hygiene. So, so let me break down things for people who are watching, especially for candidates. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Shilpa was being very humble when she said her profile isn't that amazing or anything. Because let me tell you, in her profile, and I can tell you from a third person perspective, if I'm a part of a school or looking at your profile, some of the things that she had considerably remarkable that one, she she's coming from India, but then she has a diverse exposure of going to Singapore, Japan, and then even Australia. And in US, they kind of, that kind of makes you stand out as compared to most candidates who are coming from India and mostly are female. So it kind of shows like you have some kind of diverse experience, even though, even if you did shadowing out there or some courses or whatever you did during that time shows that you're open to diversity and flexibility in life. And I think, and actually you were, because after you moved, you, this was a very, this is a very frustrating period for people who don't know or who are planning to come when you enter into US, but you're not authorized to work. It feels like somebody yeah. tied, tied your hands and your feet and threw, you, and threw you in a sea to swim. You know how to swim, but your hands are tied and you feel like you're handicapped. And it's a very frustrating period for yeah. most of us. But then she got into dental assisting. She applied. But here's a very key thing about her journey that she analyzed that she is not getting into any any schools. She's not getting results. She got 16 rejection. And mm -hmm. then she was smart. Here's the thing. She figured out a way to get the hygiene license and People who don't know, as Chilpa mentioned, that in Florida right now, you can get a dental hygiene license through an exam if you are a foreign trained dentist. Secondly, she invested in, in herself for going for preceptorship at Boston University. And I can tell you that's no easy joke because you have to pay a large amount of money just to shadow people in the school pretty much. You learn a lot, but it's a large amount of investment. You're living for a whole month up there far from your family. And uh, I I can see that that investment she did added on to her profile. Well, I'm glad. So just to, if I re-say, re-ask you this question, that uh, you got 16 rejections and now you have three acceptances and four invites. What was the difference if people, if you want to tell them what did you change in your profile or what did you do in that one year that made such a significant difference? What would you answer them or tell them? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I literally touched every point of my profile, like a holistic thing, I would say. Like I made sure I add on some CE courses, like I have done local anesthesia course in University of Florida. So that was a good add-on hands-on course, which added literally 60 C points at a stretch. Like it was a good experience too. So that shows that, yes, this this candidate wants to learn more. So I made sure I had some CE courses. And then I, like I told you, I did preceptorship. I cleared the licensing exams. And that exam was is not an easy one. Like you have to do three, three, like two theory exams and one practical so that also shows that yes, this candidate has the potential. Was the sorry? Was the practical on a human uh, patient or no, a type of doctor? No, 
no, it wasn't a mannequin. So they just put the simulated calculus and you just have to treat like a human. And yeah, that was like a one day exam. In in ADEX, like the licensing exam yes. that you would be giving in the next couple of years, they make mm-hmm. you do the same thing on a typer, don't mm-hmm. where they have calculus and you have to scratch it off. Okay. Yeah, and, so okay. I got that one done this Good, good. Okay. Uh, so moving forward, what? Uh, so you also went to preceptorship, right? Yeah, and I also did some volunteering work. I worked in Texas Mission of Mercy, which I didn't do previously. So I literally touched every thing that I could develop instead of just going one side or just doing the okay. same thing. Okay, I don't know if you're comfortable. Approximately, if uh, preceptorship, it must be a costly uh, yeah. thing. It was. So, yeah. And then you said you also got en- uh, engaged yourself. You also engaged yourself in Boston and uh, UPenn research. How did you land it that thing? So again, I would really thank my friend because I emailed lots of professors. I used to live in Dallas, so there was a university, Texas A and M. I literally went to their website. I emailed every little professor who was in research saying, I'm so-and-so, I'm interested, but I didn't hear back from anyone. Unfortunately, also the COVID was the biggest factor. And then uh, my friend, I told her, like, I'm looking into opportunities. So she, who was a UPenn grad, was working okay. with... I, I think you should say her name and say a shout out, kind of like a thank you. <laughs> yes, so she's my friend. She's my best. It's Harita. Her name is Harita Hanta. She's currently practicing in Pennsylvania as a dentist. So she was the one who introduced me to her professor with whom she used to do research. So I reached her out, I sent my resume. I had a little informal kind of interview with her. She liked me. She she was like, yes, I can work with you. Was so, this sent to virtual or in person? I actually met her. That's when I met when she began. Yeah. So here's, here's the thing for people who are listening to this. So she, after those 16 rejections, you already must have heard she, she went, I would say she kind of like analyzed like this is like really strategic planning and she invested a lot of money, resources, mm-hmm. and she reshifted the whole table for herself. And I think your traveling or your early background kind of like the, the kind of like thought process, not many people are able to do it. That was really smart at your end. But along with that, in order and getting research remotely in a far di- because academic institution, I've been a part of them as a student, faculty don't have time to reply you back. And especially yeah. when you're some A, B, C, D person sitting in another part oh, of the yeah. But you were knocking. So a lot of people need to understand that she was knocking a lot of doors. It wasn't like she just went to you and one person and asked. She mentioned she was reaching out to as many people as she can. And one of the things I can tell you about Shilpa is that her communication is comparatively far better than most candidates I meet. And the way you communicate, the way you respond to them matters a lot because I felt like culturally our countries are different. The way we write emails, the way we communicate, US has its own professional kind of situation. So the way you reach out to them or talk to them because time is very valuable and you want to be straight on to the point, but you shouldn't be demanding because beggars can't be choosers. For the lack of better term, I'm just saying this. I've seen people who would send email and they will be demanding and they would write ASAP. I'm, I'm sorry, I have to give this example. I would get yeah. messages or email and people would write ASAP and I would be thinking you don't write ASAP in US. That's a very harsh term that a boss tells their subordinate. But so one of the other good thing about her that she was able to land that research. I think that was a big thing that you were able yeah, to do, especially with UPenn. And then the other thing is she made that travel. She visited UPenn, uh, Philadelphia and she actually met that person up there. So if you look at overall, there was a lot of investment in terms of money, resources, so here's my next question. You were working as a dental assistant. You became a hygienist. But investing all of this money, how supportive were your family? Because non-dentist people can't understand what the hell these guys are doing. 
<laughs> so I'm I'm blessed. I'm blessed in that case because my husband is the one who was like he was making sure whatever I ask, okay, if it's helping you, let's do it. So he was the one who I still remember the day like you had been telling me that I just turned the table around. So I would really like to mention more than me, it was him who made sure I applied to Boston Preceptorship then and there because I came to know that I cannot go to in-person research in UPenn. I was very, I was literally upset like, oh no, I missed a good opportunity. You yep. before she no thing. So he was like, you can't just sulk over what's happening. Just, just get on and just bounce back. So that was kind of attitude I developed this whole journey which is very important. I would like to tell everyone there will be a lot of setbacks, but we have to just bounce back. So here's my question, because I can tell you uh, from looking at this process, being a part of it, mm -hmm. you get an email, you're really happy, and the next day you lose that opportunity. Mm -hmm. There's so much fluctuation. So how would, and people panic all the time. I, I've yeah. been there, so I know people panic all the time. They are happy and all of a sudden what they were expected didn't come. How did you manage that? Because you were going through hoops, like jump, it's back and forth, back and forth. So how, how was your stress management during this time? I um, I would say I'm way better now. Like when back in then I was very stressed. Like I didn't know why things are not working out. Like what is wrong with me? Like am I not being sincere? Am I not being smart? I don't know. So... It's also the God's timing, I believe. You start feeling the heavens closed on you. That's what yeah, you start to feel. What? I, I literally, I, I feel like everything is closed. I just put all my hopes in one thing and if that's not happening, I'm like, oh no. So that is one more thing I learned that we shouldn't just stick to one thing or just keep our mind tuned to one thing. We should be open for everything. So that's when, yeah, that is another thing which I learned. And then, like like I told you, immediately I applied. It was the last date for the preceptorship application. And I applied it. I believe that was, like I told you, one of the major factors too. So, yeah, so, like, if we leave it, we will just stay there. We have to just move on. That's good. That's, 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 that's a wonderful advice. But here's my next question, which most people must be asking. How was your experience with interviews? How was Boston for you? Because Boston is still conducting interviews. I personally know a little bit because, but how was your experience? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for training me, like how to be on an interview because I was not really prepared to be like candid in the interviews. Uh, that's what I learned from you. Like just be ourselves, like whoever is giving interview, make sure just be your true self, talk to them openly. They just want to know you. None of the interviews that I had so far, like I had three, none of them were clinical or they want to test your knowledge. It's all about they want to know you as a person, your personality. They want to see whether you can be a good fit to this school or not. That is all they want to look. And another thing I noticed is they want to just make sure like whatever experiences we put on paper are reflecting when they ask us the questions. So... All the interviews were very chilled out, very friendly. They want to just make sure. We, it was like kind of a conversation, I would say, like all of them. So Boston interview was amazing. Like I could sense it while interviewing itself. Like the interviewer was like. That's going to happen. Yeah, it was amazing. She wants to know me more. She wants to know what I did and why Boston. So especially because I did the preceptorship, yeah, but. Due to some reasons, I'm switching to UPenn, but otherwise, it's an amazing school. So, you will understand when you're doing the interview. So, I, I appreciate, like, I would say even for me to work with you for interview prep was a good opportunity because I got to learn a lot from your story. And that was one of the reasons I wanted to interview. And Shilpa's uh, actually a couple of our friends, I'm working with them now. But thank you for that. But my next question was that, I just, when I was reading your, when I work with candidates, sometimes you read their story, you just know they have a very good chances because you, when I was reading your profile, I could see you had good chances. I I wanted to ask you a question. I usually say from my personal experience that 80% of all the interviews are the same. 80% yeah. 
is going to be the same thing so if you are strongly prepared for one conversation like one interview you can actually actually win the rest of them too do you agree with me 100% it's it's everything the same they just want to know about you that's it yeah if you prepare for one i feel you get the whole base of how to talk how to steer the whole interview towards yourself you know where you're strong so speak speak out so that the interview wants to know more so that's how we can take a little bit of control over the interview so i feel unless there are some special interviews like michigan has mmi so at that time you might need a little bit extra training on that but otherwise yes i feel it's the so same. so here's the, the thing i want to like help people kind of see because people are preparing on their own how was in your and you had a lot of different things you went to japan you went to australia you had singapore then you did uh, dental assisting shadowing perceptorship so you have a lot of different stories to tell but what yeah. has been and we discussed this during our preparations that but how do you feel telling stories in your interview is a significant way to communicate with people how was your experience using stories from your life like your hygiene experiences yes uh i think we should tell it in the form of a story because it's more engaging they feel like yes uh so what happens so they want to know more about you like it kind of introduces the interviewer as well to know you more so i feel it should be more like story than just simply reciting our cv which i used to do before i used to be like or sitting straight and you know of course we have to be professional but at the same time we should show our ease which comes with experience so just we have to be ourselves just so, tell it in the form of a story that's true the, I, i usually say interviews are like a badminton match or like a tennis mm-hmm. match you can't keep holding the ball you have to play with them it's like oh, a yeah. yeah it's a artwork that you're actually conducting a conversation So I'm glad you were able to share this with individuals. So I'm I'm one of the things I'll tell you as a colleague uh you mentioned about going through all that stress and your spouse helping you out. I would say this is something you will will which will help you even in the dental school and especially you fan you pen it's a you have friends it's a tough program you have to go through a lot of things you're coming back home at 8 and at night like lab work so ha- having going through that journey actually makes you more resilient resilient even during that time and hopefully your spouse sees this and he he's mentally prepared as well all right so <laughs> yeah my my next question is doctor so i'm going to keep it brief and i'm trying to focus on people right now in different part of the country different part of the world looking at your story if i am somebody who just migrated to us or planning to migrate or just gave my national board yeah. and toefl how how what's your advice on personal statement resume like moving forward from there because did you change your personal statement after getting 16 rejections i did I absolutely did because first time i i wrote my story but i felt i should be more uh like to the point and more professional you know i had my story i spoke my heart out i got it done but i felt there are certain things which should not be written in sop probably so like yes. what like can you just give a vague uh-huh. example that doesn't have to yeah. be something specific yeah uh, like you can write your struggles but don't be like too much into it like getting a different kind of vibe it should be a way how you turn your struggles down like you know how so, new work to you so it has to get the feeling that yes so and so like i did really made it like too too much like a story but i felt i should change it so i changed it for the second time so but i would say just make sure don't be too personal it has to be like why you want to get in the school and what would you learn from this program okay i understand what you're saying and just to interpret it for people what shilpa is saying you want to talk about your personal story but in a manner that's audible to the american ears because yeah. if you go into too much detail that they can't understand it will create ambiguity because 
our cultures are different the world we are coming from is different as she mentioned that she was traveling with her spouse wherever they were leading and most american culture wouldn't even understand like things work very differently for rest of the world so when you are writing your story write it in a manner that's understandable by the american individuals so otherwise you will create ambiguity and most probably your sop will go down the shredder the other thing that she's mentioning and correct me if i'm wrong is that if you're going to talk about challenges of your life don't act to be a victim if you're saying i went through something tough say how it made you a stronger person how it made you a bigger individual and how it will help you become a better dental student in the united states rather than saying i'm the world's biggest victim and people are scared of getting you into school because they are scared you will come and you will keep com- crying and you think you deserve yeah. you deserve things that that is true that is true you, sh- you should show how smart you are and how resilient you are like how you can bounce back even if you have setbacks that's what they want to know i remember one of the professors in university of illinois uic yeah. uh, when i had an interview that's what she asked me how do you manage your stress I mean you know dental school is going to be stressful so I gave her an example and I told how I overcame then like how what I do so they want to know how good are you with dealing with stress so we shouldn't sound like a victim yep i'm i'm i totally agree and most uh, okay. just as we were i usually whenever i interview or talk to a dental student or a candidate i talk about stress because dental schools like to ask you this question and mm-hmm. and in a serious note your life becomes very i personally will tell you like i i in pakistan like my father passed away all that going through immigration lot of stuff happened for me early on being an oral surgery resident but when i started dental school at like the age of 30 up here i this was so much stress that i couldn't believe i was like you've gone through so much other crap and now you're actually getting depressed of an academic institute and i talk to people and they said it happens to everyone every because the system is made in such a way you're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars and you want to prove yourself because you're coming through of years of fighting you made it happen like for other people in india pakistan middle east uh nepal these countries you made the dream happen and when you're in there every day you're thinking the ma- to make the best out of it and it's a lot of burden on your shoulder and it makes your hair grow white really fast just let yeah, it yeah I I I'm a lot of grace yes <laughs> So so that happens but I'm glad that uh you were you came out of this whole journey really positive and like the yeah. I would definitely say the way you were able to turn it on things because you live in si- applying to 16 school means on average if you apply to one school and it's $300 multiplied by that yeah. with 16 and around 500 $5000 $5, you're applying for that and then you got rejection but you were stilling to pull in more investment to make it happen that requires a very resilient soul so if somebody's watching this you need to realize if you've been getting rejections or you've been pushed back and you want to do something i would say this is a very good example of somebody sitting right in front of us who analyzes systems who had her family with her supporting her that's a very important thing so you have that strong support system that you're willing to jump deeper into the sea to find that treasure so and i would say you complete what you wanted i and i'm it's a um, and i'm i would say your story should be encouraging people who are listening to right now so i don't want to drag uh, this longer or take more of your time any words or any suggestion if you were redoing this or you you would tell a younger self if Yes. you can send a message to a younger self of you down three lines the three years back or somebody who's starting what would be your advice to them first thing i shouldn't have stressed that much that's what i would say to my younger self like i was restless i was restless i was like why things are not happening i i keep questioning so i wish i shouldn't have done that because i believe there is certain things which we have to go through to be here that's what i would say to everyone like everyone out there don't compare your profiles don't panic don't just be restless that hey we should get in no we should go through the process i'll give you a simple example i was thinking why should we do tofel i studied everything in english 
back in my country. Why should I do that? But yes, I feel there is a reason for that. Because of two cells, we practice speaking, we practice listening, we practice writing. So all this is going to help when we are giving our interviews. I'm just giving you a simple example. When you give an interview, you have to talk. So you learn that ease, that communication, which you practiced in TOEFL, writing, you write your statements, your supplementals. So everything has a reason. It's kind of interlinked. So I should have enjoyed my process even more, which I started enjoying at the real end, like when I was all getting into school. So I should have not thought like, hey, why should we do this much? I mean, I I absolutely understand it's a lot of money. We invest a lot of money, but we could get back that money. So we should just think that way and be positive instead of just thinking, why should we do this? Schools are crazy. They don't know. They will call you if you're worthy. They will. That's what I would say. So here's, here's a, uh, I really like the point that you're making about TOEFL because people need to understand. Yeah. And this is a very key point. All of us, you gave National Board, I gave it once, like a couple of years yeah. back. We all have pass, 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 right? But what mm-hmm. makes a difference is your TOEFL the number score. score. Because everybody's pass who's applying, but when they see a high TOEFL score, your application just goes up there. So TOEFL makes a lot of difference. And uh, do you understand Urdu or Hindi? I understand Hindi. So there's a saying in Urdu, you might have heard it in Hindi too, the, that they say se zada aur se pehle nahi milta, which means you told this to me yeah you don't get things yeah. before your t- appointed time yeah. or then more that is true that is true God will give you one when you're pre- ready for it yep you know you have to be prepared for that right. if you just get it easily you will never cherish it yep so, well said doctor so here's the last thing I'm gonna ask you and I never actually asked you before I, I as far as I when you reach out to me for interview prep, how did you found out b- about me through a friend or YouTube or? Yeah, uh, it was through a friend. Um, her name is Doctor Ruth. I think she took care. Yeah, yeah at- she's- So she was the one who told me. She's from Italy. Yeah. Yeah, okay. she's from Italy. I met her during my uh, local anesthesia training. She's a hygienist too. So yeah, and Florida. She told me you can try getting the training from him. So. I immediately went to your channel, I saw all your videos, and I was like, yes, I'm going to take from him. So I really liked the way you were telling. And afterwards, after I took your interview, I started recommending my friends, like, go, go to him, he's good. Because it's more like you don't give up answers, but you want to know about us, and you tell us how to talk, which is more important. To well, do well, I would say, doctor, it's been an honor for me as well. Because yeah. uh, it, it's some stories are worth listening to. You learn so much out of it. And uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to work with you. That's, I, I, I would say it was an honor. And hopefully we'll stay in contact. And for people who are watching this video, uh, I hope you saw something meaningful through this video, learned from her journey. Because I, put, I know her time is very important. And getting her for this interview, making sure this gets uh, uploaded on YouTube. So hopefully in the coming years, it will help you achieve the dreams that you are looking forward to. And if you have any questions, you can write in the comment or reach out to us. And so hopefully we'll see you in a more meaningful video. Yeah. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you.